Okay, in this video, I just want to look at an example of a rational equation and that has an extraneous solution. So, again, a rational equ equation is where you have basically uh, polynomials divided by polynomials. So here we have x over x plus 2 plus 2 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 5 divided by x plus 3. So this is going to be a rational equation. So quickly here, what is, you know, when we talk about extraneous solutions, what are these? So I, I've got here the basic notion of an extraneous solution. What you're going to do is you're going to solve this rational equation or, or whatever rational equation you have, and you're going to find a solution that makes the original equation undefined. So in effect, when you substitute that solution in, it's going to produce um, a zero in the denominator of a fraction somewhere. And recall that dividing by zero is undefined. So that's that's the notion here. So first things first, let's solve this equation and then we'll see what happens. And again, just to show exactly what we're talking about. So recall to solve, so to solve these rational um, equations, you basically Usually the first step is simply to uh, get rid of the denominators. So what I mean there is we're going to take this equation and we're going to do a little bit of algebra to it to where we get a, an equation that we're solving that no longer has uh, fractions in it. So let me even move this. Well, I, I guess this is okay here. So, okay, so the first step in usually these types of problems, anywhere you can try to factor, try to do that. So, okay, in my first term, I've got x over x plus 2, nothing to factor in the denominator there. Okay, so x squared plus 5x plus 6. So x squared is a quadratic. So, and since the coefficient on the x squared is 1, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to think of two numbers that multiply together to 6, but add to give me positive 5. Well, I can multiply 1 and 6, but, well, if I add those, I'm not going to get uh, uh, positive 5. Likewise, I could use negative 1 and negative 6. Again, if I add those, I'm not going to get negative 5. But it looks like we could use positive 2 and positive 3. So if we factor this as x plus 2 and x plus 3, you can check that if you multiply this, this out, this denominator, you will again get x squared plus 5x plus 6. And that equals, again, 5 over x plus 3. Nothing to factor there. Okay, so let me copy this and move it down a little bit. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to get, uh, we want to get rid of the denominators. So notice I've got a denominator of x plus 2, and then I've got a denominator of x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3, and then another denominator of x plus 3. So what we can do is we can simply multiply both sides of this equation by those denominators. Notice if I multiply by x plus 2 and x plus 3 on the left side, well, if I do it on the left side, I'll have to do it on the right side as well. But notice if I distribute that, I'm going to get rid of the denominators of my fractions. And we'll, we'll take a look at that here. Well, okay, I've got to multiply it on the right side as well. Okay, so when I distribute, okay, this first term to this first term, and let's write it out. I would have x, and you can think about this as being over 1. So I would have my original x, but then it's, it's being multiplied by the x plus 2 and x plus 3. So let's go ahead and just write out all the steps. And if you feel confident not doing this part, by all means, you could skip this step. But let's just write them out just in case. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with my... I'm going to have to distribute to my second term. So I would have 2 multiplied by x plus 2 and x plus 3. Okay, my denominator, I still have the x plus 2 and x plus 3. And on the right side of my equation, again, you can think about that as being over 1, I would have 5 multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3. 
divided by x plus 3. Okay, so this is precisely why, again, we multiplied by x plus 2 and x plus 3. We're trying to get rid of these, these denominators. So notice here, my x plus 2 and my x plus 2 could cancel. And that would simply leave me, so again, you can think about, you know, there's still a times 1 in the bottom. So I, in the numerator, I would be left with x times x plus 3 divided by 1. Well, again, that's just x multiplied by x plus 3. So I've gotten rid of that, that denominator. In my second term, right, the x plus 2 and the x plus 2 will cancel. The x plus 3 and the x plus 3 will cancel. And again, you could think, you know, you could think of there's being a, a multiply, you know, there's still a times 1 in the bottom. I've seen people in the past even be like, oh, everything's gone in the bottom. It's, it's 0 in the bottom. No, you can still write that as multiplication by 1. So likewise, we would be left with 2 over 1. But let's just write 2 over 1 as 2. On the right side, last but not least, it looks like the x plus 3 and the x plus 3 would cancel. And then I've got 5 multiplied by x plus 2. So, okay, what have we done? We factored the denominators because that helps us recognize what we need to multiply both sides by to get rid of the fractions. And then it's just a matter of cleaning it up. So again, as I was saying, if you feel like jumping directly to this step, by all means, go for it. But maybe if you're new to this, it's always good to see these steps. So at this point, I'm going to re-multiply. I'm going to keep distributing. So on the left side, x multiplied by x, that'll be x squared. x multiplied by 3 will be positive 3x. And then I've still got my plus 2 left over. On the right side, if I multiply 5 times x, will just be 5x. And then 5 times positive 2 is going to be positive 10. So notice at this point, we're going to have a quadratic equation to solve. So we've gone from a rational equation. We've now transformed it into a quadratic equation. And again, quadratic because it had the highest power that I see here is degree 2. And again, everything else is a polynomial um, on both sides. So for these, what we do is we try to make one side equal to 0. So I like to have my x squared term be positive. Well, it's already positive on the left, so I'm going to start moving everything over to the left. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 5x from both sides. And well, to get rid of the positive 10, I would have to subtract 10 from both sides. So I'm just keeping everything lined up here. So, okay, there's nothing. The x squared is still there. 3x minus 5x is going to be negative 2x. Positive 2 minus 10, that's going to leave me with negative 8. And, okay, on the right side, 5x minus 5x is 0. 10 minus 10 is 0. So now we have our quadratic equation. And usually for me when I see these, I try to either, I, I try to factor first. And if that doesn't work, I usually go to just using the quadratic uh, quadratic formula. Of course, there's some other techniques you can use, but those two, the quadratic formula always works. It'll always produce those solutions. It can be a little more tedious, so I, I try to factor first. So this is like where we were factoring a second ago. Okay, so the right side's still equal to zero. Well, to get my x squared, I'm gonna need x and x. Okay, so now I need two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but add up to negative 2. Okay, so I think, okay, so some combination of 4 and 2, I think, are going to work, because that, that, right, it looks like, obviously, that's going to give us an 8. So I know, since I want negative 8, one of these has to be positive, and one of them has to be negative. You know, let me think about that for a second. Which way is it? Well, let's see. It doesn't matter which way, right, in terms of multiplication. As long as one's positive and one's negative, I'm going to get negative 8. But I want a negative 2 when I add them together. So it looks like we would need a negative 4 and a positive 2. So again, when I multiply those numbers, they're going to multiply to negative 8. But negative 4 plus negative 2 is going to give me negative 2, again, which is what I wanted. So again, you can use the FOIL method, you know, distribute all this stuff out, collect like terms, and again, verify that you get this back if you aren't quite sure. 
Well, once we have it factored, we just take each one of these, whoops, let's just keep my original color. We take each one of these factors and we set them equal to zero. So now we've gone from a rational equation to a quadratic equation, and now we've got two just linear equations. Well, so for my first one, I can add four to both sides. So that's gonna leave me with x equals four. And for my other one, well, it's x plus two, so I would have to subtract two from both sides. And that's gonna leave me with x equals negative two as my other, and I should say, I, I said solution, but these at this point are potential, potential solutions. So let's go back to our very original equation that we were trying to solve here. Okay, so there it is. So I'll let you check. I'm gonna let you all check. Check that x equals four is in fact a solution. So I'll let you all do that. And all you're doing is everywhere there's an x, you would have to plug in four. Four, 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 and then do all the arithmetic. Well, hey, well, let's, let's, okay, let's even check it, right? Let's, let's just go for it. So I'm gonna plug in, everywhere there's an X, I'm gonna plug in four. So I've got four over four plus two, plus two, multi uh, and then in the de denominator, I would have four squared, plus five times four, plus six, equals five over four plus three. So if somebody even says verify your solutions, that's what it means. Go back in and plug it in and make sure it works. And this looks like this is gonna be kind of sloppy, so I hope the arithmetic's not terrible. So let's see, we would have four over four plus two, which is six, plus two over, let's see, four squared is 16, five times four is 20, plus six. Maybe I will get lazy and let you all check it here. And then five over, well, four plus three is seven. Notice when we substituted in that, that, that potential solution of four, it's clear that none of my denominators are gonna be equal to zero. So four over six, that reduces to two thirds. Let's see, 16 plus 20, well, 16 plus 20 is 36 plus six, that is gonna be 42. And then on the right side, I still have five over seven. Let's see, so this is two thirds plus, okay, uh, two and 42 can reduce. I can divide both of those by two. So two divided by two is one. 42 divided by two is gonna be 21. And I, I, I sometimes I even like to put question marks here because I'm trying to verify really, are these equal? Because I still don't know yet. So I'm gonna put little question marks there because just writing equals sort of says they are equal. Well, we don't know that yet. Okay, well, I need common denominators. So on the left side of my equation, right, I've got a denominator of a three and a denominator of 21. So I could multiply top and bottom of my first fraction by seven, and then that's gonna give me that common denominator of 21, right? And the denominator seven times three is 21, seven times two is 14, plus one over 21. Does that equal five over seven? It better, or I'm gonna be disappointed. So 14 plus one is 15 over 21. I think we're in business on the left side because both of these are divisible by three. 15 divided by um, three is gonna be five. 21 divided by three is going to be seven. So hey, I'm gonna put a little check mark here. So yes, in fact, uh, x equals four is a solution. We have now verified that. Okay, well, let's check is x equals negative two a solution. Okay, so again, if we substitute a negative two everywhere, I would have, well, negative two over negative two plus two. And at this point, honestly, you can go ahead and stop. 
I mean, you, you could plug it in everywhere else, equals everywhere else, you could substitute it in. But notice for this first term, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have negative two divided by zero. And again, this produces something that is undefined. Which means even though, okay, um, it said potentially x equals negative two is a solution, it simply means that x equals negative two is an extraneous solution. Therefore, the only solution to the equation is x equals 4. So okay, maybe kind of a long-winded example, but I really just wanted to go through it all and also give you a little refresher on the basics of solving rational equations. And this is pretty much, again, how you solve all rational equations. The only nightmare that really comes into it is if the denominators are tricky to factor or if you have lots of factors and when you multiply, you know, everything by that common denominator like we did here, like when you multiply all that out, you know, if what you're left over at the end is a big nightmare, well, that's just part and parcel. Sometimes it happens. This one wasn't too bad. I think these are pretty standard, something that you would see in an algebra class. A lot of times they do turn into quadratics and you factor them and, uh, but, and, and just sort of like a little hint. If you're, if, if you're not getting zero in the denominator from your solution, it's going to work. So like I already knew without even checking that x equals 4 is going to work. I mean, it, it's just, it will. And I, I recognize it's not going to give me zero in the denominator. And I can immediately see, right, x equals negative 2 is not going to work because of this x plus 2 in the denominator of my first term. And it even appeared, right, in my second term when we factored it. Right? We had x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3. So we would have also gotten a 0 in the denominator here as well. But, but even if it makes a 0 in the denominator in just even one place, that's enough to say, well, it is in fact undefined, and that means it is an extraneous solution. So, all right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you. Feel free to post comments or questions. Hopefully I can point you in the right direction. And if not, hopefully there's somebody else out there who can. All right, have a great day, everybody.